In this video, I want to differentiate cosec, sec, and cot, just to show you how you can do this. Now, we should know what cosec, sec, and cot are in terms of sine and cosine. Cosec is, of course, 1 over sine x. Sec is 1 over cosine x. And cot is 1 over tan, which is the same as cosine over sine. Okay, I'll just pop it as 1 over tan down here. Now, because each of these are written as fractions, you could use the quotient rule on each of them. Um, and that's fair enough. That's perfectly fine to do that. So, if we had a look at number 1, uh, 1 over sine x. So, y equals 1 over sine x. So if I was going to use the quotient rule, then dy by dx is the bottom times by the derivative of the top, which is 0. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine x, over the bottom squared. So sine squared x. So sine x times 0 is, of course, 0. So we're left with minus cosine x over sine squared x which you can simplify down to being minus uh, cosine over sine times by 1 over sine. So breaking it apart, and that is, of course, minus cot, and that is, of course, cosec. So that means that 1 over sine x differentiates to minus cot x cosec x. Now, you could alternatively have used uh, the chain rule in order to get there. So if we write it as y is equal to sine x to the minus 1. So using the chain rule, the derivative of what is inside comes outside, so that's cosine x. The minus 1 would come down to the front, and then you would take 1 from the power. And so what you have here is minus cosine x over sine squared x, which is precisely what you have there. And then you can break it apart in a similar way. OK, so it's really up to you as to which method you use here. So let's have a look at number two. So y is equal to sec x. So y equals 1 over cosine x. So we could use the uh, quotient rule. So we have the bottom times the derivative of the top. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is minus sine x, over the bottom squared. So of course you've got 0 there. Minus 1 times minus sine x is just sine x. So we have sine x over cosine squared. OK. So then we can break that apart. So sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. And so we've got tan times sec x. OK. So y equals sec x differentiates to tan x sec x. Just as we did before, you could have used the chain rule, which some of you would prefer. So you've got the bottom, sorry, you've got the interior function differentiates, comes outside, so that would be minus sine x. The minus 1 comes down to the front, and then you subtract 1 from the power. So the two minuses cancel, and you've got the sine x over cosine squared which is precisely what we've got here. And then you could break it apart to get it to tan x sec x. OK, in exactly the same way as before. So that's number two. OK, so number three, y equals cosine x over sine x. So. You could use the quotient rule here. And if it's in that form, the most likely route through would you be using the quotient rule. So you've got the bottom times the derivative of the top. Take away the top times by the derivative of the bottom. 
divided by the bottom squared. So in the numerator, we have minus sine squared x take away cosine squared x over sine squared. So what you can do is you can pull out the minus sign from the numerator and have sine squared plus cosine squared inside a bracket. So you've got negative 1 in the numerator and sine squared in the denominator. And so that's minus cos x squared. So that means that cot x differentiates to minus cos x squared. Now, you could have started with y is equal to tan x to the minus 1 and then use the chain rule like we've done before. The derivative of what's inside comes outside, so that's sec squared x. The minus comes down to the front, minus 1, and then take 1 from the power. And so we have this. So sec squared x over tan squared x, or the negative of that rather. Okay. So what have we got? Um, minus sec squared. So that would be minus uh, 1 over cosine squared. And because you've got 1 over tan squared, that's the same as cot squared. And so cosine squared over sine squared. The cosine squareds cancel, leaving you with negative 1 over sine squared, which is, of course, minus cos x squared. So you could do it. The most likely route through for this one is the quotient rule, but you could do it using uh, the chain rule, but it's a little bit more messy.